first of all i want to say this is i'm a big horror fan as you can maybe tell from one of my uh this movie got me because i remember searching for those video nasties when i was a kid anytime uh let me start i guess with you brano how did this how did you take this on and what was the your inspiration for creating this visual feast i guess i i have I had the idea to make a film about a film censor, um, which which came from reading this article. Um, it was like in a horror magazine, and it was this article about the Hammer Horror era, and they mentioned something in there about how uh, censors during that period would always cut the image of blood on the breast of a woman because they believed it would make men likely to commit rape. And I was like, okay, well, surely you know that's quite a hard and fast rule basically and surely like there were quite a few men you know in the censorship office watching these films so why what protects the censor from losing control like why is it one rule for the censor and another rule for for everyone else so that was like my way into thinking about this character who was a censor who maybe starts to have a strange relationship with what they're watching at work and um I guess I started reading about censorship in the UK through from the beginning of censorship and quickly landed in the video nasty era because obviously it's like there's so many films that came out of that era that are so hugely influential for like my generation and that I was watching as a kid but also the reaction to the films in the UK um the reaction to this kind of boom in low budget horror was so conservative it was like this moral panic over what these films are going to do to to us all and that that, that there was something from the tv was going to like come out and possess us and make us go out and start like hacking each other to death and i i just love looking back um you know with some objectivity at that hysteria basically i love it yeah and i absolutely and neve you uh you kind of immerse yourself in this with this role and it's really fantastic performance what was the kind of research what kind of research did you do finding this character and and, and going to the depths that she goes to yeah for me uh the character starts off by finding out what scares them and so that's i, I have to i write down that's the first thing i do is like what what what's her biggest fear and answer that and then kind of go from there and building the backstory and creating the, the relationships between her and her parents. And that for me, it's that that's where I start off, it's just trying to create the skeleton of the character. And so from, from that, it's, I went into looking at childhood trauma and the effect of, of that, that that would have as an adult. And, and that would then lead into like repressed memories and that psychological distortion and so there was so much mentally to research about the character before I even got to like researching censorship and and what that all meant. But it made so much sense for a character like Ina to to witness something so terrible as a child and why she'd want to become a censor. Because for her, it's a career path where she feels like she's protecting the public and it made so much sense. So just reading the script, Prano had laced in so much of what the character, who she was and where she where she came from, but so subtly that you're not hammering the audience over the head with it. And for me, that is like incredible writing because you, you're leaving the audience to do its own research. And I felt like when I, when I finished reading the script, I wanted to go back and reread it again because that that just yeah, I hope that answers your question. No, it does. So long about how uh, this character because it was it was just so fun and enjoyable to research. What was your favorite part of uh, of playing this character? What what was the, the the thing that really connected to you? Um, you so, it's it's when you read a read a story where the character is pretty much in every scene and you you are on psychologically as an audience member on that journey with her. It's, I don't know, it's, it's kind of hard to explain because 
it was just so much of where she begins and where she ends is she's pushing the boundaries of the, the psyche and I don't know it's like I love studying people and why people make certain choices and there's there's the, the choices that the character makes in this are so bonkers from an audience member looking out that for me it's just the challenge of trying to make that as truthful as possible absolutely prano i want to talk a little bit about because we're, we're talking about movies that were censored and were considered bad for us and as you say the the blood on the breast type of thing but the irony i feel like we're seeing a resurgence for especially fem women filmmakers in horror are you are you seeing doors opening and and chances that maybe weren't there say five years ago ten years ago yeah i think there was a period um you know a while ago where both being a female director and a horror director weren't necessarily the most popular things to be <laughs> and then suddenly you know horror seems to be you know the flavor right now it's really exciting because as horror fans we know that horror has always been um you know there's always been horror that's had something to say there's always been horror that's been exploring society's fears and you know um things on a deeper level but i don't think that that was breaking out necessarily into the mainstream in the way that it has done over the last few years so you're starting to see a lot of people wanting to to make horror that maybe weren't wanting to make horror before and and with the the female aspect as well i think it's really interesting because when i was growing up i mean i was obsessed with american psycho and i never knew until my 20s that that was directed by a woman mm -hmm. and it, i think if that had been made now maybe that would be being held up and looked at as like female directed horror um you know elevated horror or whatever people are calling it nowadays um but it's just that the language and the conversations weren't going on at that point i don't think so maybe you know i, I don't know i think we're kind of looking at it all in a different way right now and, and it's elevating women and i think that's a really great thing that that we're we're elevating women in the genre um because there are many women making horror and wanting to make horror um it's just about people people being given the opportunities and also i gotta you know i'm, I'm gonna give your your star a shout out again because you're seeing a lot of really great characters i love women's characters coming out in horror that aren't just the screaming oh no let me take my top off type thing they're seeing a lot of smart interesting flawed you universal characters uh, I, i'm going to jump in back with you neve did you uh find do, are you seeing a change in in this this business and how we're where we're going when it comes to women's roles yeah there's a huge shift um women are allowed to grow old now as characters <laughs> um, like my god what do you mean women exist past 30 that's insane um, <laughs> so yeah it's 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 brilliant it's, and, and may it continue you know um but it's it's uh it's about time <laughs> yeah as you said it's like for me the most interesting people are the flawed ones the, you know the broken ones and yeah. um yeah there's just there's so much to work with and like like as a as a kid growing up like all my all my favorite characters that I watched were, were being played by men. You know, you see like a taxi driver and one flew over the cuckoo's nest. And, but these were all being played by men. And there was, it was only like someone like Gina Rowland and one woman under the influence that had such a huge, significant impact on me as a, as an actor. And she's so flawed and yet she's not, she's not, um, she's not weak. She's, She's going through something so psychologically um, heartbreaking, but she does it with such strength. And I think that that is such a was such a powerful thing for me as, as a as a as a young person watching. And I think it had a great impact on me. I think yeah, I, I love that you mentioned Gina Rollins because I think that's one. I, I remember seeing Gloria as a kid and just being this woman is badass, dude. And that's the kinds of roles that we weren't seeing women play back then, and now we're seeing more of it. Uh, who? What are, were you a horror kid at all? I know your 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 director was, but were you a horror person? Yeah, like 
I think it's like when you're told you're not allowed to do something, you want to do it more. <laughs> so anything that was like, <laughs> when you're with your friends, you're like, we're going to go down to the movie store and we're going to, we're going to rent an 18s film and you, you get your bigger sister to go in to get it for you. And, and like, that was always the thing. It's just like, you want to do things that all the, the older kids are doing. And uh, so that was like being a kid and that was my introduction into, into I suppose, cinema was through horror because it's exciting um like alien was like one of the i remember like distinctively that was like one of the first horror films that i watched and i watched my dad and the moment in which the, the john hurts stomach explodes and that you know the alien comes out i remember my dad purposely like walked out of the room and he knew exactly what moment to come in and scare the crap out of me um and so those are all like very like very like grounding moments and uh, memories as as a, as a kid but now as an adult i'm like I kind of, I not that I steer away from it, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't think I can handle a scary film. Um, but you know, horror movies is like has evolved so much now. Like they, it's not just, and like as I said earlier, it's like I talked about how I think Prano has kind of tapped into this new nuance in, in film filmmaking that's just so original and exciting. I agree, and uh, Prano. Uh one of the things I thought was interesting about the story is how you kind of twist and turn and, and we learn more about this character and what she's going through, but you don't give everything away. You leave a little bit to the audience to kind of uh, play with. Uh, was that always in the script or were, were you ever inclined to maybe, no, let's explain everything. Let's get it all out in the open. No, I, it was always um, my firm belief that, uh, we should only ever know what Enid knows. Mm. And if Enid doesn't find things out, then we don't find those things out as an audience because part of her problem is not knowing. That's part of why she ends up in this situation is because she doesn't know. Um, and the torture of not knowing something and the way that if you don't know something, you fill in the gaps. Um, you know, you create a fiction that might help you understand real life because you haven't got that information and it was interesting because you know as in development when you're writing the script uh i do remember you know having those conversations with our kind of financiers and execs and things saying you know do you do you think you should explain anything and and i always had my answers had my reasons and they were really supportive of that they all, i remember at one point them saying you know, we'll never make you, we'll never push you to to do that. We know that, we know why you're telling the story this way. So um, hopefully, I mean, I like the idea that when you don't have all the answers, it lives on in your mind. That personally, I like things that are left a little bit open. And often when a film wraps everything up in a little bow, it can somehow destroy something for me. Obviously, it depends on the film, but... Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I love curiosity and I think it's nice to leave some curiosity in the mind of the audience. No, I, no, I agree. And I love that ending. I would, I do want to say with a movie like this, there is a, you know, obviously it's an independent film, a smaller budget. Do you think, yeah, I know I got a sequel here. I know I could do, or do, is that just, no, let's just make this movie. Let's get this out. Let's release it. We joked a lot on set about the Sansa sequel, didn't we? <laughs> Enid riding through the woods on like a, a quad bike. <laughs> well, see, I want to see that now. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, you know, never say never. That's my that's my motto. And never never say never to anything. I, I'm I'm definitely interested in the themes of Sansa and exploring further in other projects. Um, but there's no planned sequel at the moment <laughs> but who knows <laughs> well, i want to see a movie about doug smart <laughs> <laughs> he lives such an interesting life we did have a few ideas for like so, like the, the side stories of all the other characters and how we <laughs> could do these spin-offs of like yeah it's doug smart and and uh fraser the head of the censorship office and like their backstory <laughs> um, <laughs> Valerie, I want to see a story about Valerie. I was like, Valerie. <laughs> well, I think I this says a lot because there are, you know, as you're great in this, obviously, but 
there's a lot of interesting characters in this. Were there, were there, was there a, a, a specific character that you connected to? Both of you? Besides maybe the one you played? Uh, I mean, there's, I think there's so many. I was so lucky on this film to work with the cast that we we worked with so they made like every character was a joy um to bring to life i think the beast man for me was um he's a really key character because he kind of represents horror mm -hmm. um and guillaume delaney who who played him is an incredible actor and he brought so much heart to the role, which was really important to me that this didn't become like this um, kind of just big caric caricature beast, that yeah. he's got this sort of sensitivity. And for me, that was really important because he represents the way that horror can hold us and create a catharsis and be somewhere that actually some people can find um, some solace in a weird way. Mm -hmm. So it's funny because when we were rehearsing, we rehearsed the scene where he embraces Enid. And I remember being like, like when you actually see it physically, it's like, wow, nobody's hugged her <laughs> this whole time. Oh my but, gosh. but horror hugs her. It's just her relationship with horror is too muddled up and confused. So she can't lean into that hug. Um, so for me, that character is really, really representative of a lot and and Guillaume was incredible to work with but the whole cast were I'm just I have to pick one so I'm going with him <laughs> <laughs> what about you Neve? What, what, what other character could you relate to I just I just loved my parents Andrew ha Andrew Havel and, and Tara Holman and this, mm. they they brought this oh, they were just steeped with a family that like parents that have lost so much they've essentially lost like two daughters and those scenes when you watch them are just you're so claustrophobic in this uncomfortable uncomfortability like none of them can articulate what it is that they're feeling because they're so terrified to kind of go into that hole and when you have a person like Enid who constantly just kind of wants to like lift that lid on the Pandora's box and when it does you just see the little cracks that that father and mother who are dealing with such trauma um, and and sadness are portraying it's like they're just so good they're like any any actors wish of like having those as your parents wow. <laughs> yeah, actually fantastic so um I don't, I don't say I related to them but I just I I could sit and watch them those two actors just work the scenes all day it was just such a such a gift to work, work, work with them and michael smiley he's just such a dream he's hilarious <laughs> I was and to work with him was just such a such a dream well guys we gotta wrap it up but it was an absolute pleasure and i really do it's just a powerful film i thank you for making it both of you thank oh, thanks, you. Jane. <laughs> i'll see you guys later <laughs> see you for the sequel <laughs> 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 Bye, guys. <laughs>